Hello guys and welcome to your 8th Java tutorial. Um, <clears throat> in this tutorial we will be going over for loops. Now as you know we already have while loops and you, you guys probably already know how to use them. And uh, all I really wanted to go over is I wanted to expand on that and I wanted to add in for loops. And now for loops are also a way of looping code but it's slightly different and it might be more useful in some cases but technically you could loop code with while statements while loops and for loops uh, so anyways let's just clear out this code that we have here from the last tutorial uh, yeah we don't, we're not gonna need our scanner for this one uh, and anyways I just like to start start the tutorial by a quick demonstration and explanation of the code needed to make a for loop. So, uh, let's create an integer x or all right, I I I'm going to go over this right now. So, let's let's just create an integer x, okay? And let's start our for loop. Now, as you remember, the while loop was incredibly simple. All it really had was some kind of a condition. It had some kind of a condition and it also you needed to increment that number at the end. So the, the loop would terminate eventually. Now you see what the for loop is, is the for loop doesn't need to take a condition at the end of the loop, like the x++ plus plus and the while loop, but it actually uses, you need to give it all the information at the very start, and then it's just going to loop that code for a certain number of times based on a certain uh, logic that it follows. So this is this is how we need to make our for loop so remember the while loop only had one argument well the for loop has three arguments each separated by a semicolon and how we need to write these is well at first let me let me write these now we actually don't need the x equals zero here for the for loop it's just less than okay there we go easy and simple. So what is this first argument? This first argument sets this variable x or i or whatever variable we want it to be. It sets it equal to 0. And that's our starting value. We can set it equal to like 3, 4, 5. It's going to start looping from 5. But 0 is usually uh, the starting value that you want to have. This condition it tells the loop when to run or when not to run. It says while x is less than or equal to 10, run this loop. And this last condition is what it needs to do every time it runs the loop. So it could be x++, plus plus, which is uh, increases the value of x by 1, or it can be x is equal to x times 2, which multiplies the value of x by 2 every time the loop runs. There's, there's an infinite number of possibilities, but usually the most common one is x++. Plus plus. Uh, so anyways, what code do we want to execute when this loop is running? Well, all right, I think I've kind of like failed on typing. Oh no, I'm fine. I didn't fail on typing, but all I really want to do is that the value. All I really want to type is um, the value of. All right, nitpicky about spelling there. The value of x is, uh, and then add x with string combinations. Uh, so really, all this is going to do is it's going to say for x is equal to zero, x is less than ten, x plus plus. So it gives the for loop all the conditions at the beginning, and then it keeps running. It executes this block of code, goes to the beginning. It it says, well, what do I do at the end of the of the code? I need to increase the value of x by one. Well, one, one is less than or equal to ten. So it keeps running this code, keeps looping to the beginning, increasing the value of x by one. And remember, it always starts from this value. This is the initial value it, start from, it starts from. So it takes 0. It says, is 0 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So I'm going to run this code. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's just run this. So instead of just explaining it, uh, you'll actually see some result. Uh, and bam. All right, you see we start out, the value of x is 0, the value of x is 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Now if we change the starting value to say 5, it would run from 5 to 10. Oh. All right, that was kind of weird. Yeah, you see the value of x is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're changing the... 
Uh, and to add to that is that this integer x here, we can actually skip the declaration here. We needed we needed to declare it outside the while loop uh, when when creating it. But here in for loops, we can just create the integer inside the actual uh, parentheses. So we can create it directly as an argument, which is a really nice shortcut, by the way. So we don't really need to remember to put int x somewhere outside the program to use this variable x. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of a really really nice nice thing to know. It's convenient, uh, and yeah, let's just change some more parameters here for fun. We can say x is less than or equal to 50. It's going to loop up to 50. Uh, there we go. We have from 5 to 50. You can also, going by once, we can change the interval. We can say x is equal to x plus 2. Now it's just going to continue going from 5 to 50 by intervals, intervals of 2. As you can see, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, etc. Uh, so, yeah, those are really the only three arguments you need to know for a for loop, and you should be fine. Uh, we'll be using this later in some very nice applications. Uh, so, yeah, just kind of review this material of loops. It's very useful stuff. Uh, you will see that later. And now let me kind of give you a more advanced example for now. Say we wanted to add from numbers 1 to n, n being any given number, we wanted to add all the numbers between them. So say if, if, um, if, it, if a number was 5, uh, we would add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. If the number was 3, we would add 1 plus 2 plus 3. So how would we do that? And actually, you know what? I changed my mind. We, we're going to need the scanner variable in this tutorial. Uh, so I've wasted time at the beginning trying to uh, delete it because we're still going to use it anyway. So anyways, please excuse me while I type this code. Uh, we're creating a new scanner variable, my scan. Uh, and we're setting it equal to a new scanner that scans stuff from system dot in or our keyboard. Uh, so there we go. <clears throat> and what do we go, what do we want to do? Well, first, let's just set up our program. All right. Say we have an integer that's called user user number. All right. We want to add find the sum from uh, one to this user number. So if this is five, it's one plus two plus three plus four plus five and then etc and etc and etc. So we are going to uh, simply go here and we are going to create a new variable x and set it equal to 1 because we want to start at 1 and we want to go to user number and here we are simply going to say x well x is less than or equal to user number instead of 50 so user number can actually change and we're going to set our intervals back to x++, so it's going to increase by 1. And we're going to erase any uh, any of this code so far. And it's asking us to initialize the variable, which means set it equal to 0. Once again, I said, if we don't have it set equal to anything, it's null. And null isn't really an integer, it's just an empty space. We can't compare uh, an empty space to an integer. That's just that's just not, not correct logic. So we're going to have to preset it to 0 for now. Uh, so here we have int user number is equal to zero, and we are going to set user number equal to equal to my scan dot next, and we might as well give the user uh, sorry next int. That's that's my bad. Uh, might as well give the user a nice little prompt uh, to go along with that. Enter the max number. Not very, not very descriptive there, but uh, it should be okay. One second, I want to see. I want to see if. All right, yeah, that would work. Yeah, so we don't even need to preset user number to zero. We can just set it directly equal to my scan dot next. All right, I guess I. All right, yeah. It automatically assumes that it's going to obtain a certain number value for this. Then that's that's good. That's great. So we don't even need to do that. All right. So anyways, we've created a scanner variable. We've prompted the user for it to enter the max number. We scan a number in, 
And then we say, we're starting out with a variable x, this variable that increases every loop. We're saying that x needs to start at 1, and it needs to go until it's equal to user number, and it needs to increase by 1 each time. What do we want to do each one of these times? Well, we are going to create a variable called int sum. And each time that this, uh, this for loop loops, we are simply going to add, sorry, int sum is equal to 0 at the very beginning it's equal to nothing and each each time we're gonna sorry we're gonna add x to this sum and what plus equals means is a shortcut it's a shortcut for sum is equal to sum plus x which is all we really want to do we want to keep adding this val changing value of x every time the for, for loop loops until it reaches the this max number or the user number and at the very end all we're really gonna do is print out the sum The sum is plus sum. So, uh, yeah, that's that's sum plus equals x is a shortcut for that. And by the way, sum times equals x times equals x is the shortcut for sum is equal to sum times x. So just keep these things in mind. They're actually very handy to have uh, these shortcuts. I'm kind of telling you a lot of them, but just uh, yeah, you know try to try to keep them in consideration when coding. Because you know programs are lazy; they wanna they wanna cut down on all the work they have to do. Uh, so, anyways, let's just run this program and let's see how it works. Enter the max number three. The sum is six. Whoa, bam! That was amazing. So it starts out at one. It says if is one less than or equal to three. Yes, it is. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna add one to the sum, which is zero. So the sum's one. It repeats here. It says is x less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. It's, it is. Uh, it's 2. Then it, and it goes here. It adds 2 to sum, which is already 1. It's 3. Goes back up here. It says, is 3 less than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. So it goes down here, and it adds 3 to the sum, which is already 3 from the previous 1 and 2. Then it makes it 6. Goes here. It says, is 4 less than or equal to user number because it increases it by one every time it reaches the end. Well, four isn't less than or equal to three, so it terminates the loop and it goes on to this statement to print out our sum. And this will work for almost any number. It'll work, well, no, it will work for any number. Say six, sum is 21, 10, that's, it'll, it'll work for anything. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this tutorial. This was a really, you know, quick example to uh, demonstrate uh, how we would use for loops. Uh, thanks for watching. Please comment, uh, rate, and subscribe, guys. Like this video if you found the information useful. Uh, thanks, guys, and peace.